Topping today's news, three shootings overnight, including two juvenile victims. The press secretary questioned on the government's timeline to demolish illegal shanty towns. We get an update on the business license process as the deadline approaches, and staff at the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture forced to evacuate their building today. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Jorino Saunders. This is your JCN Evening News. It's a pleasure to have you join us. Action will be swift when it comes to the government moving on the vexing shantytown issues in the country. So says Press Secretary in the office of the Prime Minister, Clint Watson. And even though no definitive timeline has been given for those who occupy unregulated communities to vacate, there is a time frame. JCN's Destiny Johnson has more in this next report. Irregular migrants and irregular housing or shanty towns will continue to be a key talking point with Bahamians across the country until the government's plans to address these issues come to fruition. On Sunday during his national address, Prime Minister Philip Davis announced Operation Secure, which was launched following the lifting of a shanty town injunction, which now paves the way for the government to begin to take action on unregulated communities. He also warned that documented migrants living in these communities will be required to relocate at their own expense or face reparation. And even as the government has been hard pressed to act on the illegal migration crisis in the country, no timeline was given. When asked about a time frame, Press Secretary in the Office of the Prime Minister Clint Watson says this. There is a, there is a time frame. Uh, we're not announcing one because we don't want to make it, make it sound cliche -ish. Um Get your affairs in order, it means just that. Do what you need to do and take the necessary action. Um, because we're not going to announce when there will be uh, the, 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 the legal people who will go in, the laws, people, law enforcement agencies who will go in and, and of course, do their checks. So we encourage people to just, just do what you have to do, get, get your house in order, settle your affairs. Uh, we're not going to put a deadline because we believe it's, it's, it's past due. It should have happened already. Operation Secure is a collaboration between law enforcement agencies, including the defense and police forces, along with immigration officers who will partner to address security, migration related issues in unregulated and unlawful communities. Mr. Watson says while the government does not want to give a timeline, action will be swift and deliberate and Bahamians should judge the Davis administration by its actions. This room here will keep the administration accountable as to how long you're taking. So we're, we're, we're quite aware of the urgency of this the necessity of this, and the importance of this to the Bahamian people. And, and that means the Davis administration cannot slack up on taking action. In fact, before Prime Minister even spoke about it, things have already been in motion, uh, and, and, and things were already happening before it was even announced. Uh, so the administration is not slow to moving on this. Uh, this is very serious business for the administration. Now, in many quarters, some may say that the Prime Minister's comments during his national address are more harsh than comments made at the close of the 44th regular meeting of CARICOM held in the Bahamas. During the closing of the meeting last Friday, Prime Minister Davis suggested that the lifting of the Shantytown injunction by the Supreme Court only puts an option on the table. Add to that, he noted that if persons are evicted from shantytowns without alternative housing, it it creates another crisis. Mr. Watson contends that the Prime Minister's message remains the same, although his tones were different, which signals the attributes of a good leader. You have to know when and where and how to say certain messages. The Prime Minister on Friday was among CARICOM leaders speaking to the world. There is a tone that's important as a diplomatic leader in a democratic nation. Uh, when he is talking to his people, specifically to actions he's about to take, there is a different tone. Uh, Prime Minister is very eloquent and smart enough to know when is the right tone to present the right message for the right image for our country. It's a lesson so many other people can take a, a lesson from and take out of a page of the Prime Minister's book. That diplomacy is important. 
Mr. Watson further contends that Prime Minister Davis is doing what is necessary to follow the law and not reneging on what the government nor on its promise to address illegal migration. For JCN News, I'm Destiny Johnson. Thanks for that report, Destiny. As the March 31st expiration date for business licenses across the country draws closer, there have been some concerns that the Department of Inland Revenue will not complete all applications in time. Minister of Economic Affairs Michael Halkidis gives an update on the number of business licenses needing a review. He says steady progress is being made. Last week, I think I, I gave an update that um, we had 10,000 we had moved from 3,000 business licenses being issued up to uh, 10,000. I can tell you now that we have 13,468 uh, been issued. That's completely closed, approved, and issued. We have out another 5,597 just have been approved but are waiting payment. So if we add those two together, we, we get just under 19,000. Uh, we have 9,859 where some additional information has been requested and we're just waiting or they're just waiting on that information. And um, we have had, we have 8,166 to review. That's at yesterday, so I'm sure that number is lower. And we have had uh, 651 cases rejected. So I guess they'll have to come back. So last week, the minister announced a number of business applications would be fast tracked. Additional employees were added to the Department of Inland Revenue to deal with the busy season. Minister Halkidis goes on to say that it is the duty of the department to ensure that all applications are truthful. I think the, I, I should say that the way forward for business is to be in the position where you're keeping your records and you know the records of your revenue, the records of your expenditure, um, because that's the way you know whether, whether your business is profitable. So we should not look at it as um, the department uh, um, imposing measures on people, but just as sort of a reinforcement of what part, you know, good business practices are, whether it's the small business, the medium business, the startup business, or the large business. And so that is what we're encouraging. And as I said last week, uh, we are, and as the Prime Minister reiterated yesterday, um, we, are, we will have special services for the uh, very large businesses, right down to the, the small businesses, where we'll be establishing customer service uh, units to uh, really, as we go forward, be able to deal with these cases and not have the sort of um, um, disruption, I don't want to say disruption, but you know, just the sort of debate that we, that we, that we have. Minister Halkidis assures Bahamians that all applications will be resolved in a timely fashion. Going forward, he expects the process to be much smoother. Three separate overnight shootings leave three injured people in hospital, nursing injuries, including two juveniles. In the first incident, shortly after 7.30 p.m. Thursday, a 15-year-old male was shot while on Windsor Lane in the Windsor Park area. Police say the juvenile, along with a group of people, were outside in a community setting when a lone gunman dressed in dark clothing emerged from the side of a building and opened fire on the group. In an attempt to flee, the victim was shot to his lower torso. He was transported to hospital in a private vehicle where he remains in stable condition. Some hours later, in a second incident, a male, while visiting family members in the area of Coburn Street and Fox Hill community, shortly before 10 p.m., was approached by two males dressed in dark clothing, brandishing firearms. They robbed the victim of his red 2022 Krypton motorcycle. As they were leaving the scene, one of the men on the motorcycle shot the victim to the right leg. The victim was transported to the Princess Margaret Hospital, where he remains in stable condition. Meanwhile, responding officers located the stolen motorcycle in the immediate area. They also pursued occupants of a white Japanese vehicle who they believed may have been responsible for that incident. The pursuit ended in the Mason's Additions community where the occupants exited and fled. Officers were able to arrest one of the adult males who fit the description of the suspects in the initial armed robbery. And in the latest shooting incident, a 10-year-old boy was shot to his right leg sometime around 1 a.m. on Friday. Police reports indicate that the boy, after returning home from purchasing food items, allegedly was allegedly shot by occupants of an orange-colored vehicle while in the area of Lion Road. That's off Shirley Street, just east of Camp Road. The boy received injuries to his right leg and was transported to hospital in a private vehicle where he remains in a doctor's care. Should you have any information regarding these 
or any other criminal matters, contact the police at Crime Stoppers. That's 328 TIPS, 328 8477. A frightening experience this morning for employees at the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture after the office received a bomb threat. The anti-terrorism unit and fire services of the Royal Bahamas Police Force now investigating that threat. Police say shortly before 10.30 a.m., an employee at the ministry received a telephone call indicating that a bomb was planted in the building. Staff members were evacuated and the police called in. Officers conducted a sweep of the building to ensure that it was safe. Employees did return to their working environment. Again, police are investigating the source of that call. And finally in this segment, as the Bahamas celebrates its 50th Golden Jubilee Independence Anniversary, some of the leading financial brains in the country are already looking towards the future. Minister of Economic Affairs Michael Halkidis, Shadow Minister of Finance Kwesi Thompson, along with Governor of the Central Bank of the Bahamas, John Roll, discussed the Bahamas' future from an economic standpoint. Minister Halkidis kicked things off, explaining to a panel of Bahamians what government has been doing and where they are looking to direct the Bahamian economy. Um, in a nutshell, um, I think we have, we have a foundation in terms of our industry. Uh, we have some recent changes that I believe creates opportunity for us to have a more broad-based uh, participation. Uh, we need to mobilize uh, private sector funding, promote the the, um, the savings culture and other um, creative ways of, of um, galvanizing and aggregating capital so that we can take advantage and uh, we can truly, uh, going ahead, we have continued sustainable but very, very important, balanced and broad-based uh, economic development. Mr. Thompson offered the opposition's perspective on what they see the Bahamian economy looking like in the future, beginning with the full digitization of government agencies where permits and licenses take just hours to process rather than days and months. Uh, a key feature of our future is a comprehensive digital transformation model after countries like Estonia and Singapore. Uh, this transformation must not just shape the government and, and regular commerce, but uh, it, it really should be viewed as uh, a transformation of a, of a way of life. Uh, consider, if you will, a future that looks like this. We have an electronic ID to access all government services and all banking and financial services. Uh, for opening a bank and or a business, the KYC requirements are all automatic and done electronically. You know, we have a, a fully adopted the once only principle. You know, children all over the Bahamas, including the family islands, are taught information technology from nursery school. Coding and, and blockchain tech uh, is a part of early primary school curriculum. Bahamians export their software development skills like India and have attracted the best tech talent in the world uh, as a Caribbean Silicon Valley. During his presentation, Mr. Roll said as a country, the Bahamas at times can be its own worst critic when it comes to directing the nation's ambition. However, he said that there has been tremendous progress made in the last 50 years as it relates to maintaining stability in relation to the U.S. dollar and exchange controlled policies. We'll take a break here. We'll be right back after these commercials.